think you ought to slow down. The speed limit's 55, you know. Who cares? There isn't a cop for miles. Watch me blow the doors off this Camaro. So, when do you guys get those Camaros? We've had them a while, and they really are helping us save lives. Have a nice day. Just when you thought it was safe to speed, coming to a highway near you, no one driving over the speed limit will be safe. Hello and welcome to the Indiana State Police Public Information Program. I'm your host today, Sergeant Dave Burston, Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police at the Indianapolis Post. Today we're going to be taking you on a ride along with Indiana State Trooper Paul Brankel, who is assigned at the Indianapolis Post. We hope you find the time with him enjoyable and learn a little bit more about the services offered by the State Police. So let's go see what he's doing. Time a pusher asks you what you need, let him know. Where's, where's dinner? Well, I thought you'd be home a couple of hours ago and what, I what, put what, everything away. What, so what I is this? Pizza? You had just called me. I would have known what Dinner to... ready is a pizza. Honey, please don't be so loud. Please don't. Let go of me! Get in the kitchen! No! <laughs> Do you want to see what hurts? That's what hurts! That's what hurts! Oh, please! <laughs> For information, call 1 800 and abuse. You chose to ignore the speed limit. This is the next 60 minutes of your life. Speeding gets you nowhere fast. Uh, what we're doing here now is we're running what we call VASCAR. Uh, VASCAR stands for Vehicle Average Speed Computer and Recorder. Uh, it's a speed timing device. Uh, however, it is, it's really not like radar at all. Um, VASCAR computes a vehicle's average speed. Uh, the way it works, it can be used stationary or it can be used moving. Uh, at this point in time, we're using it stationary. Uh, we're sitting on one of the on-ramps to I-465. <clears throat> Out on the median wall, we have two white lines painted on the wall that are a set distance apart. Uh, they have the distance at this location is 0.1122 miles, which is just over a tenth of a mile. The way this works is we sit here on the ramp, and as a vehicle crosses that line, we watch them cross the line, like this white vehicle here. He just crossed the line. I flip up the time switch. When he crosses that second line, I'll flip it down. It gives us his average speed of 70.5 miles an hour. He just traveled. Uh, just over a tenth of a mile in 5.72 seconds, giving us his average speed of 70.5. Speed limit at this location is 55, so we're going to chase this subject down. The good thing about fast car is it, it cannot be picked up by radar detectors. It 
emits no sort of beam, no microwave beam. Uh, it's simply a computer. The location I clocked him is just about two miles south of here. It's taken us about two miles to come down the ramp, catch up to him, get him pulled over. We've got him pulled over here at 56 feet. We'll go up here and see what he has to say. This subject stopped uh, for speeding. His average speed was 70.5 in a 55 mile an hour zone. Uh, puts him about 15 over the speed limit. He, uh, as I commented before I got out of the vehicle, we're using VASCAR, <clears throat> which is undetectable to radars. Uh, I walked up on this subject's vehicle. He has a radar detector sitting on his dashboard. The radar detector is plugged in. Uh, so apparently he was relying on that uh, to keep him from getting stopped for speeding this morning. The subject, very cooperative, stated he's just running late to work. I am going to issue the subject a citation. Not just because he was, it's going to be for speeding. However, I'm going to issue it to him. Uh, the subject has a radar detector in his vehicle. Radar detectors are not illegal in the state of Indiana. However, there's only one use for a radar detector. And that is so you can travel above the posted speed limit without getting caught. I personally cannot see justification in writing this subject a warning for speeding. I asked him if he knew he was speeding. He said he did. Uh, he has a radar detector in his vehicle. Uh, this is not a case where the subject just wasn't aware of how fast he was traveling. He knew he was speeding. He had his radar detector on so that he would not get caught speeding. Uh, we're going to go ahead and issue the subject to citation. doesn't just kill drunk drivers. Next time your friend insists on driving drunk, do whatever it takes to stop him. The 60s. In a world this dangerous, there's no such thing as a harmless drug. Talk to your kids about marijuana. They want to get me, I'm going to be ready to get them. They just shoot. They don't care who gets in the way. I want to be respected. Just gets me respect, know what I'm saying? I'm afraid to walk to school, okay? Yeah, I might die. Everybody dies. Kids shooting, kids getting shot. They're all victims of gun violence. The killing won't stop unless you help stop it. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT for free information. Not one more lost life. Not one more grieving family. Not one more. I don't want to die. clocked a single vehicle. We've probably clocked 25 vehicles in about the last three or four minutes. Haven't clocked a single vehicle that was at or below the speed limit. Literally every person that's passed us has been speeding. What 
I usually try and do is just find the person that's going the fastest. And... Speed limit's 55. As you say, see, most people are traveling well into the 60s. Every once in a while, a truck will come by that's running in the high 50s. Everybody's about 510 over the speed limit. The whistling sound that you can hear with the radar, this radar is Doppler radar. Uh, it's the same type of radar that the military uses. And basically what it does is the radar unit will send out a microwave beam which will bounce off these oncoming vehicles. It sends, it sends these beams out, and the quicker they start bouncing back, the, the quicker these vehicles are uh, coming at us. And that sound is just the sound associated with that beam. Not only uh, will the radar unit display the vehicle speed, it will also give a tone. That way, if I was doing paperwork or uh, had my eyes diverted somewhere else and I had the radar running, I could hear that tone, and the higher pitch the sound is, the faster the vehicle's moving. After you use radar for a while, you can kind of judge by the pitch of the sound about how fast a car's running. So if I was doing an accident report and I had my, my uh, eyes off the radar unit, if I heard a certain pitch sound, I would know that I, about what speed a car was traveling, and I'd know whether or not to, uh, whether it was one that I would be interested in stopping or if it was too slow. I could turn that sound down if I wished to. It's not necessary to have it up for me to do this. Uh, but it also, if, if a radar unit is, if there's two vehicles running side by side and they're two or three miles apart, sometimes the radar can jump between the two cars. And the clearer that sound is, if it sounds like you just have one tone, then you know you got a good lock on a vehicle. Sometimes the tone will jump back and forth between pitches, and that means that the radar is not completely locked on a vehicle. It could be jumping back and forth between the two cars, and at that point you may not have a solid, solid lock on a vehicle. Which, if that was the case, you wouldn't. I wouldn't stop the vehicle. I wait for a clearer sound. That way, I know for sure that I've locked onto one vehicle and I know who the violator is that I'm going after. I'm going to stop that brown car. The brown Ford Taurus just went by us. His speed on radar was 70. Speed limit's 55. Uh, we're going to stop him. He also, there was uh, one male subject in the vehicle. He was the driver. As he went by us, I noticed that he also was not wearing his seat belt. So we actually have two violations, one for speeding and one for uh, not wearing your seat belt. After he went past us, he, he put his seat belt on. Which drivers will do that a lot. They'll drive down the road without their seat belt. They see a police officer and they put it on. I'll go up and ask him about it and see what he says. Some people will be honest and say that they they put their seatbelt on after they pass us. Some people will try and lie about it. So we'll uh, we'll see what this driver has to say. Good morning. Good morning. Do you have your license and vehicle registration? What's your correct address? 1188. Okay, you're in Danville now. You're no longer at this address. How long has it been since you were at this address on your license? Uh, How long? Three, three months. Three right? months. Okay. You'll need to get your license updated. Yeah. Okay, state law says that you'll, uh, requires you to update your address on your driver's license. I stopped you for two reasons this morning. One was for your speed. 
Uh, as you came over the overpass there, your, your speed was 70. Uh, also, you weren't wearing your seatbelt when you came by me. Okay. Did you put your seatbelt on after you went past me? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. I'll be with you in just a minute. As I stated, this subject was pulled over for uh, two reasons. First of all, his speed on radar was 70. Speed limit's 55. Uh, also, as he went past me, I noticed that he was not wearing his seat belt. Uh, as we caught up to him, he had slowed down. He had also put his seat belt on, uh, hoping that I would not realize that he wasn't wearing it. Um, I asked him about his speed. He stated he knew he was speeding. He didn't. He didn't state a speed. Also told him that I stopped him, or that I had also noticed he wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Uh, this subject was honest, and uh, advised. He advised me that yeah, he had put his seatbelt on after passing me. So he's a cooperative subject. What I'll do with this subject is I will write him a I will write him a ticket for not wearing his seat belt and I'll write him a warning for his speed um, the reason I do that he actually committed two violations uh, a speeding ticket has two uh, negative aspects to it for the driver number one the fine is higher for a speeding ticket than it is for a seatbelt violation. Second of all, the speeding ticket's a moving violation, which will go against your driver's license, and depending on your insurance company, can in increase uh, your insurance because your insurance will uh, consider you not as safe a driver. So what I'll do is I'll write this subject <clears throat> a ticket for not wearing his seatbelt. The fine is is only about a fourth of what a speeding ticket fine is. Plus, this is a non-moving violation. It will not show up as points on his driver's license. Putting a seat belt on when you get in a car is... Uh, it's just a habit. If you do it all the time, if you make a, an effort to put it on every time, you'll get to the point where you put your put your seatbelt on without even realizing it. Um, if you don't get yourself in that habit though, you're not gonna do it. Um, it's the law. Whether you, uh, whether you agree with wearing your seatbelt or not, it's the law. It, 99 times out of 100, it's gonna save your life if you're involved in an accident. Vince, they're really cracking down on safety belts these days. Uh, what's up, officer? I'm giving you a ticket for committing an anal level. Safety belt violation. Compliments of Barney Fife. We never wear safety belts. We're dummies. Weisenheimers. He gave us a ticket. Man's gotta do what he's gotta do. <laughs> Twenty kids. For one hour a week, you leave your concrete world of flip phones and faxes and talk to 20 kids about how business works. They will question everything, but those 20 kids will talk to 20 more. So by Saturday, what you said on Thursday could be halfway around their world. You get to make a difference. Could just make the rest of your week pretty dull. That's the new JA, teaching kids how business works. Do you think you have the power to change the world? I can change the world one child at a time. I know I can make a difference in those children's lives. I teach. I teach. Yes, they're teachers, but to the kids they reach, they're heroes. I teach. Do you have the power to wake up young minds, to be someone's hero? Teach, to make an impact on our future. Call 1-800-45-TEACH. Be a teacher, be a hero.
surround your campfires with water. Make sure it's totally wet. Then stir and drown again. We know we can count on you to do what Chunky says. Only you can prevent forest fires. Here it's abandoned. <clears throat> it's been here since yesterday. I observed it yesterday. So we're gonna get out. Make sure it hasn't been broken into. We'll run the license plate, make sure it's not stolen. What I've done here is I've run the license plate on this truck. The license plates belong on the truck and the truck has not been reported stolen. So we're just going to uh, figure that it broke down and that the owners just have not come back for it yet. What I'm doing here is I'm applying some abandoned vehicle stickers. Uh, it lets other, other police officers know that we've checked the vehicle so that they don't stop to check on it. It also lets the owner know that we have checked on his vehicle uh, while he had it out here. On these orange stickers, it states that the owner has 72 hours to have his vehicle removed from the interstate. Uh, after 72 hours, what we will do is we'll tow it. The orange stickers that I placed on the subject's vehicle uh, I've written down the date and time that we just now checked on his vehicle so he knows when we checked on it. it also tells him that he has 72 hours or three days to uh, get his vehicle running or to get his own tow truck out here and have it removed. Uh, after 72 hours we'll, uh, we'll tow the vehicle off the interstate just for safekeeping. Only a little motor oil. What difference is one drop of paint gonna make? This much fertilizer isn't gonna pollute anything. You're looking at a sea of excuses, created drop by drop by people like you and me. Our waters can be saved if each of us does their part. Drop by drop. If we all do a little, we can do a lot. Brought to you by the Natural Resources Defense Council, the EPA, and the Ad Councils of the U.S. and Japan. Look at this. The marijuana can mess you up. <laughs> right. We've been getting high for what? 15 years? Nothing's ever happened. <laughs> Did I get into all the drugs and start mugging people? Nah. Didn't do anything. In fact, I'd say I'm exactly the same as when I smoked my first joint. Eddie, did you even look for a job today? No, Ma. Marijuana can make nothing happen to you, too. <laughs> Who are you? See more smoke. Smoke detector. <laughs> and I see more smoke coming from that toaster. <gasps> Thanks for warning us, Seymour. I hate smoke. <laughs> so whenever I see it, I make this noise to warn you. Because where there's smoke, there may be fire. Be cool about fire safety. Be cool. There are lots of different names for noses. Um, snout, schnoz, um, ski slope, booger factory. But no matter what kind you have, or what you call it, if you use your nose to sniff household stuff to get high, you could get brain damage. Or die. And that's called just plain stupid. What I'm doing here now is I'm sitting in the median uh, on I-65, about Lafayette Road. Um, I'm using stationary radar, checking the speed of vehicles coming southbound. Uh, the speed limit changes from 65 to 55, uh, just north of 71st Street, which would be the 125 mile marker. Where I'm sitting at now is Lafayette Road, which is the 121 mile marker. So the speed limit changed four miles north of here. <clears throat> this is a good place to sit. Uh, people have a tendency not to slow down. There's a vehicle right there. He's running 75. Uh, the 
people that are coming southbound. Uh, the speed limit changed four miles back. During that four miles, they've had at least three to four speed limit signs showing them that the speed limit was 55. The subject here is in a red pickup truck. We just clocked him and he just came over the overpass at 75. The speed limit is 55. So we'll uh, try and chase him down here and we'll see what he has to say. So he's still speeding. He thinks he's slowed down to the speed limit, but he hasn't. Uh, he's just dropped from 75 to 65. He's still 10 over the speed limit. So we'll have to talk with him, see what he has to say. He's an older gentleman. Up there with his wife, a uh, really friendly guy. Uh, stated he wasn't paying attention to his speed. He was driving down the road, he was talking to his wife, wasn't paying attention. He said he started paying attention as soon as he saw me. He said we scared him sitting there. People can't get over too far here. Very friendly guy. I am. Uh, I did not write him a traffic ticket, I wrote him a warning. Uh, that usually makes people a lot friendlier. Uh, he was just an all around, he was a pretty friendly guy. He was uh, this kind of traffic stop I like. People say thank you, although you stopped him, you kind of stalled, you know, held him up a little bit. They say thank you, they know you're out here just to do your job. And, uh, you're not out here just trying to harass him. Hello, and thank you for watching the Indiana State Police Public Information Program. We hope that you found the ride-along time spent with Trooper Paul Brankel from the Indianapolis Post to be of interest and informative. Stay tuned again for future programs from the Indiana State Police Public Information Program, and remember to buckle up. The life you save may be your own or that of somebody you love. Till next time, bye-bye.